Hello, beautiful beings of light. Dale Allen Hoffman here, ancient Aramaic wisdom keeper. If you don't know what that means, look at some of my other videos. You can figure that out. I'm going to do something I've never done before, and that's not necessarily make a book review, but make a very strong book recommendation in a video. Something that great last minute Christmas gift. Uh, if you right now, if you're out there searching and digging, especially if you have anybody that's sort of a fan of my work, this is something that I absolutely want to recommend. Some people are going to be like, what are you doing? What is this that you're recommending? Well, this is a book from a guy named Rob Halford. Okay. Rob Halford was the, is the lead singer for a band called Judas Priest. I've been a huge fan of theirs since I was literally a kid back in the 70s when I was like five years old. Yeah, I, people that are good friends of mine know when I was five, I was listening to Kiss, Black Sabbath, Priest. By the time I was seven or so, I was a massive Van Halen fan, which I still am. There's Van Halen stuff all over my office, etc. This is my fourth attempt to make this video. Why? Let me just put it this way bizarre things were happening. I had weird lighting things happen, weird audio things happen. All the 10 times checking that the camera and the audio equipment was going okay and go back and they're not there, the video files and or the audio files. Almost like there was some kind of power that didn't want me to do this. And anybody that knows me, the more I get that, the more I'm gonna do it. Tell me not to touch something, I'm gonna go for that. So, anywho, Rob is the metal god the metal god he literally trademarked the phrase metal god and there's nobody other than him that deserves that title no one whatsoever this is a guy who in the book of course the book's called confess from rob halford he talks about growing up in birmingham in the uk in england of course this is where zeppelin's from this is where black sabbaths from the beatles were from right around in there funny how he actually equates be, he and his sister getting to school every day going by these belching heavy metal factories that are belching out all this toxic coal smoke and them having to hold their breath in order to get through it. It's amazing that ended up basically becoming the basis for heavy metal music that we know today. And I mean, I can't even imagine the world without it because for me, it's a, been a massive energy release. It's been a massive way for me to let my feelings out since I was a little kid. I remember 15 years old actually being at a Judas Priest show. I think it was the Fuel for Life tour for the album Turbo in Philadelphia at the Spectrum. Not realizing that Rob Halford had some, you know, history in Philadelphia. Not necessarily happy history, but I had no idea he was around there at the time. And uh was there with an older friend of mine and we made these huge banners that look like the cover of the album trying to get backstage from WYSP there 94 did these contests and it was amazing the energy that was around the show I remember they had this uh, it was kind of like a jukebox I guess and it turns into this robot and lifts Rob up I don't know 20 feet in the air maybe even probably further than that during the song Helly and Electric Eye blew my mind, mind blowing for a kid. This stuff just gets into the pores of your being. You know, the music that's been there for me, a lot of people that know what I do now, they're like, what the heck is Dale doing what? Because of course, you know, when I was 15 years old, I was in all these bands with 20 something year olds and I'm smashing guitars, lighting them on fire, throwing my guitars into my dummy amps that I kick over and just, and people are like, Dale's doing what now? He's doing what? So I get a kick out of that whole thing. I do remember my, the t-shirt that I got from that tour, Fuel for Life, was the greatest rock concert t-shirt I've ever gotten in my life. Greatest shirt ever. It was really good quality and it had like all these different colors in the silk screening which the, the 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 five members of the band standing there it was just really awesome shirt and i wore that thing until it literally became mesh and literally fell off of me in the early 90s during a concert on stage it just kind of fell off me and i just i was like okay i guess i'll let it go now but uh i'm still listening to priests today their last album firepower loretta my beautiful magdalene wife people i should say she just kind of deals with it some of my friends too i'm like i'm sorry but i gotta hear priest right now and i'll turn on you know priest iron maidens another band that i'm really into 
Uh, but Loretta sees the priest look that I get where I just have to hear, especially Firepower. This new record is amazing. I've been listening to it three or four times a week since it came out, I don't know, two, maybe three years ago. Best thing they've ever done, in my opinion, right up there with Painkiller and some of their other awesome stuff. When I was a kid, I was listening to their music constantly. I mean, just rock and roll, British steel, hell bent for leather, unleashed in the east, you know, point of entry, um, a sad wings of destiny, screaming for vengeance, defenders of the faith, turbo, you know, everything after, you know, from painkiller, everything after that. It's amazing. And all the stuff Rob's been doing independently as Halford or as Rob Halford. But it's the the depth of what was in the book really got me on a lot of levels people ask me a lot what are my favorite things to read it's not some stodgy religious thing or even spiritual books in all truth it's actually debaucherous rock star biographies and this one doesn't disappoint in that way there's more in the reason why i'm recommending this and i want to say a couple of things just really briefly i'm not really going to go really deep into the book i don't want to throw it all out there but there's something rob talked about a lot in the book where he talked about his mom would often say Rob, are you happy? And Rob would go, yeah, Mom, I'm happy. All right, if you're happy, I'm happy. Oh, man, I mean, that's that's really big. That's huge for a kid, and it seems like not a big deal, but that's monumental, actually, to be able to do something like that for your child, to say, if you're happy, I'm happy. I'm going to read a little piece here. I, I want to say that, you know, Rob to me is someone who I uh, see it's interesting too this is my fourth time making the video and I feel like I'm gonna start crying he's a man of incredible integrity to me and that doesn't mean that he hasn't stumbled and screwed up in his life uh, never met him personally I tend to know like a lot of rock stars or musicians actors actresses because of the work that I do and working with people one-on-one -on -one, but I've never met Rob I've always felt like he was a good friend somehow Tried getting tickets for their last tour, which ended up getting postponed because of COVID. Uh, and I couldn't get the seats that I wanted, so I kind of gave up on that, coming to Charlotte, North Carolina. But uh, Rob's a guy that I could always tell had very high standards for himself. And I recognize that in myself because I'm kind of hard on myself sometimes. Anybody that knows me well, I hold myself to higher standards than even the people around me. But I want to read a little bit from the book here. Uh, so here we are from Confess, Rob Halford. He talks about something he was essentially going through. And I'll get to that after I read this little piece. He says, the strangest thing happened. I have no idea where it came from or why, but an urgent thought came into my head. I have to go to church. Church, uh, he wasn't he's Roman Catholic, but not necessarily heavily practicing. Let's put it that way. So I did. That lunchtime, I left the Grand, which is the theater he was working at. He was in his late teens here. And walked down Litchfield Street to St. Peter's Collegiate Church. It's a big, ornate, old Catholic church in the city center. But it was empty when I got there. I walked up to a statue of the Virgin Mary and communicated with her. This is something personally that I recognize not even being Catholic, but the amount of time that I spent in St. Patrick's or St. John the Divine up in New York City, either when I was living up that way or even just visiting. Spent a lot of hours in those churches, not even talking, just being, being open in a, a wide open prayer mode without using words. I'm not even sure if I spoke out loud or just thought hard, but this was what our Lady of Lord. This is what I told our Lady of Lord. I really need some help here. I'm so confused about how I feel and what I'm going through. I don't know whether it's right, whether it's sinful, whether it's evil, whether it's okay. I don't know what to do. And an extraordinary thing happened. As I spoke or thought the words, a wave of peace washed over me. It was like all my angst and frustration had lifted. Lifted. I smelled the fragrance of roses. Anyone who ever, who's ever been around my healing work, the room fills with that fragrance. It's pretty phenomenal. I looked around the church, but there were no flowers to be seen. What happened in that church in, here I go hammering in English town, Wolver, Wolverhampton, Wolverhampton, 
my English friends make fun of me and the way I pronounce like from I say when it's from and so I try not to pronounce too many English towns. What happened in that church in England that lunchtime was I really blessed by the Virgin Mary? Well, I know how silly this may sound, but 50 years later, it still gives me the shivers. It gives me the shivers, too, when I think about it. And for a bit, my angst went away. So what was Rob's angst? Here we are, the metal god, the head of one of the biggest heavy metal bands ever. At that time, I mean, really, you just had Judas Priest. And I really have to classify him differently than than Sabbath was different than Judas Priest, which was different than Zeppelin. Judas Priest to me really, and you know, people lump Iron Maiden in with heavy metal, but they're different too. Really, when I hear the word heavy metal, I think Judas Priest. That's just the way it is. And here's Rob Halford, this guy that's leading the biggest metal band in the world. And what was it that he was having such issues with? Hmm. He's gay. Hmm. Now, at that time, I didn't really think much about it. I think I just, you know, knew that he just had awesome fashion sense with like leather and studs and, you know, he was wearing sort of some of the stuff that later on actually, uh, like what's well, Glenn Hughes, you know, the biker from the village people was wearing. And I didn't really think much about that. And it's funny that when I did find out, you know, he sort of accidentally came out on MTV in the 90s when he was away from Priest for a little while. And uh, I remember when I found out and I'm like, oh, huh? Of course he is and I just kind of went on my way but then I went back and started rereading some of their lyrics and I was like okay now I get it so you know Rob is an amazing guy the reason I want my the people that are around me or whoever you are to read this book the reason I think it'll do wonders for you is it's I think it's a, an amazing document of a person who for decades was in the closet because of course the other members in his band here's rob he's in the biggest band and the one of the biggest band in, bands in the world <clears throat> excuse me all the other guys are you know got women all around them and he's alone he can't really do anything because it's an unspoken code they never really hammered on him in the band about it at all but i think rob knew that if he came out that that would probably mean a lot for the bottom line of the band if they had a gay lead singer, which now nowadays it doesn't matter, thankfully. Uh, but it's really inspiring for me to see the ways he got through that. Some of his crazy, you know, not necessarily backstage, but on the road antics, which, you know, I love reading about stuff like that. It gets, you know, I get a kick out of it. I, I love... Uh, the fact that people, some people might think I'm some kind of holier than thou and I'm nothing but, uh, I'm as raunchy as Michael Landon was, you know, a guy who would, you know, <laughs> tell them like raunchiest joke possible or walk up to the kids on the Little House on the Prairie set and a frog would jump out of his mouth. Then he would walk on screen and start bawling his eyes out. So it's amazing. Uh, I, I'm, I'm really interested in just being a balanced, open person. But all of the homophobia, the, the, the LGBTQ criticism, all of the, you know, wrapping that in with the Jesus teachings is absolutely vulgar and disgusting. To be, to all of that, the racism that's in there and all of the that homophobic just all lgbtq and all any other gender identification non-gender identification to pull jesus into that and judge other people in the way is vulgar and i'm going to be blunt fucking disgusting you know it's one of the reasons why i do what i do because that's all 100 100 percent complete bullshit because he is the first people that would be right there next to them holding their hand while you spit your vile hatred and vitriol at them and i'll be right there next to them too defending defenders of the real faith because it's a total load of crap what i see done in the name of jesus by people who don't even know anything they don't even know his real name they think his name was Jesus. They don't know anything about the teachings. They don't know how things were manipulated and changed over the centuries. They have no idea and bless their hearts. It's in that ignorance that they jump out and fire at others, including people like Rob. You should see the crap people say about him just while I'm reading an occasional book review or interviews that other people are giving and someone mentions Rob and has this homophobic slur that comes out. It's revolting and it's disgusting. 
that being said to me he's a freaking hero and he always has been and he always will be he's awesome and I wanted to add a little piece in the end here uh, I doubt that he knows this I don't know what his family knows about the name Hulford but Hulford actually goes back you know he's the metal god remember that well I'm gonna say Rob is also Lord <gasps> sacrilege what do I mean by that well anybody that's around me knows I'm all about the language working with the Aramaic language that Jesus actually would have spoken and if you go backward from what we have as Lord which today is 100% completely removed from the Jesus teachings. Jesus has nothing to do with Lord and vice versa. That word Lord is an English term which comes from the Old English. The, the word sounds like this. Hlufweard, which is the 8th, 19th century feudalism. Comes from feudalism. The Lord was the guy at the top of the pyramid. All the serfs and peons were down at the bottom. The Lord was the guy that owned the land, that was the ruler that measured out the parameters that, to, that the society must live within. He was the one that controlled the religion, the politics, and the economy of a particular region. And that's where the disgusting things happen in that way. So anyway, I think it's really cool that that word, Hlufweard, though, it originally meant loafward. He was the guy that was the bread giver and the giver of life. So Hlufweard, Hulford, a little bit later on, was literally the English word for Lord. So what a cool thing to put at the end of this. Again, whether you love heavy metal or you hate it, I personally don't care. I really do want to encourage you, if you have an open heart, to read this book because it's really incredible. It's very empowering. I think it's incredibly well written. It's just like talking with a friend. And it's got some really heartbreaking stuff in it. If you think it'll rock your boat a little, I highly suggest that. I love having my boat rocked. So, again, great book. It's called Confess from Rob Halford. It's an incredible document, incredible book. I have it on Kindle. Uh, and I, funny that I read, I don't know how many books this year because of COVID after not reading that much for years, I kind of burned out on reading too much. And as soon as I read his book, which is, it's been a while now, a few, quite a few weeks now that I finished Rob's book, I went and read it again. And then I haven't read anything since it just kind of stopped me in my tracks, not in a bad way. I just felt like, wow, there's a lot here to digest a lot more than the average rock star biography has. So Again, confess from Rob Halford. I look forward to seeing you all soon when the weirdness lifts from 2020. Thank you very much for listening, for watching. watching. And with that, I say, Amen. And so it is.